Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth Making Finance Work for Women webinar. A very warm welcome to Mr. Kant, CEO of Niti Ayok, and to Mr. Chadda, MD of Bank of Baroda. We're delighted to have you both with us today. For those of you who may not know us, Women's World Banking is a 42-year-old global nonprofit that has been working to empower low-income women around the world by giving them the financial tools and resources they need to build their security, prosperity, and resilience. We have been working in India since inception. If you're joining us for the first time, lovely to have you here. And for those of you who know us and have been to one of our events or webinars before, we're thrilled you could join us again. Thank you for your continued support. The topic that we will discuss today is around empowering low-income women towards greater economic resilience under the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana or PMJDY program that targets account opening for the masses. Over 400 million such accounts have been opened by the government in India over the last few years. Throughout all of last year, it was impossible to ignore the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on women. As the economy slowed, McKinsey estimated that women were 1.8 times more likely to lose their jobs than men. Further, those female workers who typically earn up to 35% less than their male peers suffered from a lack of savings in social safety nets, prompting UN women to estimate that 47 million additional women and girls would be pushed into poverty by the end of the year. As a result of the pandemic, 157 governments responded by implementing social benefits programs. Countries like India stood out because their benefits programs deliberately targeted women as the gateway to the household. During the pandemic, the government opened an additional 25 million new PMJDY accounts, showcasing a pathway to deepen financial inclusion for many countries in the global south. Apart from being timely and much needed, these payments targeted at women and delivered to a bank account digitally drive not only account access, but also usage, the latter being critical to achieve full financial inclusion. During this time, we also saw a broad trend of digitization of financial services as the result of social distancing, including a rise in women entrepreneurs using social media and e-commerce platforms as storefronts for their businesses and transacting via these platforms. Women's World Banking has been partnering with network member Bank of Baroda, the third largest bank in India, and one that holds 15% of all PMJDY accounts in the country. The bank has been interested in understanding how women can be better served by the bank through their Jandhan accounts, including increasing their understanding of the account, building trust with the bank through their agents, and ultimately driving towards greater usage of the account. In a few moments, we will be hearing from Mr. Chadda on why financial inclusion is important to the bank, including what they're hoping to achieve in the partnership. We will also hear from Mr. Kant on how financial inclusion through the PMJDY account contributes to building the resilience for low-income populations, as well as economic inclusion for all. Much of our discussion today will center on our brand new report, The Power of Jandhan, Financially Empowering the Nation's Women. This report focuses on the Jandhan Plus solution created in partnership with Bank of Broda, which aims to nudge regular savings behavior among low-income women. The report finds that it should be possible to provide all women in India with sustainable access to finance by focusing on four levers. My colleague Pallavi Madho will unveil these levers and more interesting insights later on in the discussion. We're really looking forward to all your questions and comments in the chat throughout the session. Please do provide feedback. We're very happy to take suggestions for future events. In closing, I'd like to say a few thank yous. Women's World Banking is deeply grateful to its funding partners, Visa Foundation, and the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation for their investment in our work to advance women's financial inclusion in India. We're also grateful for the support from Walmart Foundation that is allowing us to further our work in this area. Thank you very much. And Ariane, back over to you. Thank you, Harsha, for kicking us off. With over 32 years of longstanding experience, our next speaker is an eminent bank tycoon of India. We extend a warm welcome to Mr. Sanjeev Chatta, the managing director and CEO of Bank of Baroda, the third largest nationalized bank in India. Prior to joining Bank of Baroda, Mr. Chatta has served as the MD and CEO of the merchant and investment banking arm of State Bank of India, the largest nationalized bank in India. His experience in areas of expertise span across retail banking, corporate finance, investment banking, mergers and acquisitions, 
structured finance, and private equity. Possessing a holistic knowledge of banking and financial markets, he has helped SBI nurture across various overseas locations. One moment. Excuse me, we're going to pivot, uh, if you'll bear with me here. We'll have Mr. Khan. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan, for joining us. No, great pleasure. Um, we have a great keynote. Let me give you a little bit of an introduction for everyone across our global audience. Um, we have a great keynote speaker for you. It sits at the heart of creating hope for an incredible India, for brands, and for booming industries across India. We warmly welcome Mr. Amitabh Khan, a very dynamic CEO and leader of India's growth engine, and premier think tank Nithi Aog. Nithi Aog is a government of India institution which aims to foster involvement and participation of state governments in policymaking and enhancing cooperative federalism. With a great vision and holistic approach, Mr. Khan has spearheaded implementation of India's most successful campaigns, including Startup India, Make in India, Incredible India, Ease of Doing Business, the Aspirational Districts Program, and many more. These campaigns have won several international awards and embraced a host of activities like infrastructure development, product enhancement, public-private partnership, positioning, and branding. We are honored and thrilled to welcome you, Mr. Khan, and are eagerly looking forward to learning about your rich insights and perspectives on engaging women and leveraging Jandan infrastructure to build resilience in India. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the first global Fundex database released by the World Bank as early as in 2011 had reported that 40% of adult Indians had a bank account. Uh, this figure had rose to 80% as per the 2018 report of the World Bank. So between seven years, it went up from 40% to 80%. And actually, women have accounted for 50% of these accounts. That has been the dramatic rise uh, of women bank accounts has been powered by a series of financial inclusion measures launched by the government like no frills saving bank accounts called Jandhan. The direct transfer of social benefit payments into these Jandhan accounts and a digital payment infrastructure called uh, the Bharat Interface for Money Beam. And the major enabler for all these measures was Aadhaar a biometric database that provides a unique identity to each Indian citizen. And so every woman in India has a biometric entity. Uh, this Jan Trinity, what we call the Jan Trinity, the Jan Dhan Aadhaar Mobile Trinity has brought more than 400 million unserved and underserved Indians into the formal financial services ecosystem. If you look at the uh, Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, the, what we call the PMMY, about 68% or about uh, close to about 20 crore accounts with an amount of 6.36 lakh crore have been sanctioned to women entrepreneurs as of February 26, 2021. Now, we have another scheme called the Stand Up India Scheme where more than 81% or close to 91,000 accounts have been sanctioned to women entrepreneurs. Now these plans have uh, financially, and these schemes have financially empowered women to lead a better life and chase their dreams of being an entrepreneur. Uh, actually, I can proudly state that India has made significant strides in widening the scale and impact of its financial inclusion efforts. In the post pandemic era, Accelerating digital technologies and strengthening its ecosystem has been a very, very important part of government's economic recovery agenda. And keeping in mind the increasing willingness of people to use the internet and the rising data traffic in the country, the Digital India Initiative coupled with the payment infrastructure is laying the cornerstone for a digital economy. Uh, within the National Institute of uh, Transforming India, what we call the Niti Ayo, we recently released in collaboration with iSpirit, the Data Empowerment and Protection Architecture, DEPA report, 
that lays down the framework for data sharing, maintaining privacy and other ethical considerations. Sharing financial data securely would drive the next wave of financial inclusion. And I believe that powered by this initiative, we need to accelerate integration of access to formal financial products of credit, insurance, pension, etc. Digital financial solutions are a valuable tool for women's economic empowerment, allowing them to be in a better position to face the new challenges that the future is bringing. These solutions need to better understand the financial needs and preferences of women. Uh, our own three-year action plan for Niti Ayo emphasizes the importance of generating gender disaggregated data and ranking states on a gender index, women index for socioeconomic opportunities that benchmarks women uh, as far as economic, political, and social barriers faced by women are concerned. It is observed by us that even though more than 55% of the Jandan accounts are of women, they are often overlooked and not targeted explicitly by financial uh, uh, institutions as a valuable consumer segment. Women constitute 230 million such accounts and a uh, substantial amount, over 307 billion, you know, uh, women constitute 230 million such accounts with a cumulative Indian rupee of 610 billion of deposits into these accounts. Uh, close to about 307 billion Indian rupee was credited into the accounts of women Jandan account holders in three months last year as part of COVID relief transfers. So government transferred this money crediting accounts into the women Jandan accounts. This customer pool needs to be acknowledged as an opportunity for banks to engage. I believe financially empowering of women is to empower the entire family, which would increase their ability to fully engage in measurable and productive economic activities. As an effort towards closing the gender gap, Government has uh, risen the gender budget by 6.8% in the 2021 union budget to Indian rupee 1.53 trillion. This will ensure and make available much higher resources for women. By identifying the prevalent income generating activities or value chain amongst women customers and connecting these income streams to their accounts, greater account usage can be activated. This will form the first link of a sustainable digital financial transaction chain. However, greater women's financial inclusion requires a more gender inclusive financial system that addresses the specific demand side and supply side barriers women face. I believe that multi-stakeholder and partnership led approach can address the gaps in involving more women in digital financial inclusion. Digital channels and innovative product designs have the potential to offer new and better value propositions for women. Improving and increasing the outreach of such solutions will allow women to use more convenient financial services. Fintechs and new digital financial service providers are the key partners uh, of regulators and financial service providers in the public sector and closing the financial gender gap. I think public sector banks have the opportunity to bring more women customers to banking and financial services economy through innovation and strengthening models like the women correspondents. And I would like to encourage banks to step forward and align their products and services to the needs of women to provide a win-win response. The goal should be to ensure that women and women-led industries have access to and are able to use multiple financial services as tools to develop their financial autonomy, allow them to contribute to economic growth and to enhance their opportunities to take advantage of the opportunities that the future of work will bring. Uh, I'm extremely delighted and it's very heartening to acknowledge that some public sector banks like the Bank of Baroda 
have come forward with the initiative to engage women through an innovative Jandan Plus package. Organizations like Women World Banking contribute through their work with public banks, which ensures that there is focused gender lens to the overall efforts. I would request more banks to engage women Jandan customers and share their success. I also would like to invite organizations working in this area to collaborate with the Women Entrepreneurship Platform, a Niti Aayog initiative with the aim to overcome information asymmetry, showcase such initiatives, and enable women to avail of their benefits. I would like to congratulate the organizers for this very timely inter interaction and hope that the useful insights will be arrived at on the basis of today's deliberations. My congratulations to all and particularly to the Bank of Baroda and the Women's World Banking for this initiative. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mr. Khan, for your time and inspiring remarks. Let me reintroduce with over 32 years of long-standing experience, our next speaker, an eminent bank tycoon of India. Again, I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Sanjeev Chada, the Managing Director and CEO of Bank of Baroda. Prior to joining Bank of Baroda, Mr. Chada has served as the MD and CEO of the Merchant and Investment Banking Arm of State Bank of India, the largest nationalized bank in India. His experience and areas of expertise span across retail, banking, corporate finance, investment banking, mergers and acquisitions, structured finance, and private equity. Possessing a holistic knowledge of banking and financial markets, he has helped SBI nurture across various overseas locations, including the US and UK. Under Mr. Chada's supervision and guidance, Bank of Baroda has positioned itself as one of the fastest growing public sector banks in India. We at Women's World Banking are appreciative of the bank's vision and commitment to financial inclusion, specifically the initiatives that are focused on women John Don customers, and are excited to have Mr. Sanjeev Chada with us. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Amitabh Khan, CEO of the uh, Ms. Harsha Rodriguez, Chief Strategy Officer, Women's World Banking, Mr. Sriraman Jagannathan, India Head, WWB, Ms. Pallavi Madhok, Director of Advisory Services, and the team from WWB, friend from the financial services sector, NGOs, and from the media, ladies and gentlemen. A very good afternoon to you uh, from India. And to all who have joined us from different parts of the world, a very good morning or a very good evening at this virtual event. Mr. Khan has so eloquently outlined the huge strides that have been made in financial inclusion. And also that now the time has come to broaden the initiative from financial inclusion to financial empowerment, and particularly the financial empowerment of women. It is in this context that today's launch of a seminal report prepared by Women's World Banking in association with Bank of Baroda, titled The Power of Jandhan, Making Finance Work for Women in India, assumes importance. The pilot study done with Jandhan customers has been an eye-opener in many ways. It is now more than apparent that by bringing the yet untapped section of Jandhan women customers into the banking ambit, we will not only fulfill our social commitment, but also unleash enormous economic potential. The facts pretty much speak for themselves. Thanks to the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana, the number of women in India with access to bank accounts leapfrogged from 26.5% in 2011 to 77% in 2017, while the gender gap has reduced from 20% to 6% in the same period. Around 32 million women have opened Jandhan accounts in our bank. And I'm very proud to say that Bank of Baroda, which has a 6% market share in India, has 15% of all PMJDY accounts and 16% of PMJDY deposits. However impressive these gains might be, there's still a tremendous potential awaiting to be tapped. Large sections of women, as you know, are instinctive savers, but they usually do so in informal ways rather than depend on the banking system. If we can convince them, root these savings through their general accounts, through sincere, friendly persuasion and better access it can become a virtuous cycle that will turn out to be a win-win situation for our women customers as also for banks. Mm -hmm. The product Jandhan Plus was created to motivate women to start savings through the banking channel and familiarize themselves with financial products. It combines a Jandhan account 
with an incentive to save rupees 500 over four months. And in return, the saver would unlock a rupees 10,000 credit or overdraft facility. There's no doubt that women who do small savings can become very important consumer segment for the bank. The study projects that at least 100 million low income women could be enabled to initiate a habit of small savings. And through them, we could indirectly reach and impact 400 million low income households or 400 million people in low income households. This would be nothing short of a social revolution. It is estimated that banks through this initiative can unlock an inflow of rupees 25,000 crore in deposits while disbursing rupees 10,000 crore in overdrafts. While it inculcates a regular saving habit in women and channelizes more savings in the banking channel, the overdraft will also help women to make small livelihood investments and thereby improve quality of life of their households. This is not, of course, to underestimate the scale of execution challenges, but there are reasons for optimism, and primarily two reasons. First, the demonstrated track record of the success of the Jandhan adoption program, which has channelized huge deposits from the informal system in Jandhan accounts, and along with them, products like micro insurance and credit link programs. And second, the successful role of business correspondents as agents of change and providing last mile connectivity. What can really become an even more virtuous circle is if we can have women as the banking correspondents reaching out to women to make sure that they can be financially empowered. Bank of Baroda believes that this segment of gender account holders holds great promise in a country like India. With economic prosperity and rising incomes, this is a segment which will grow its savings and deposit base and will move into the burgeoning middle class, which will help the bank tap into uh, a, a, a growing client team and also a big potential for the bank in terms of future customers. BOB has been harnessing the power of BC channels with great success and has been increasing its BC footprint. As we speak, uh, we have for every one branch of Bank of Baroda about two uh, BC uh, banking correspondents. We have the ambition of taking this proportion from one is to two to one is to five. We believe that this increase in outreach can have a tremendous impact in terms of making a success a initiative like the Jandhan Plus account. This will not only harness the power of financial inclusion, but also make economic prosperity in the real sense of the word relevant for millions of aspiring Jandhan account holders. The women hold the key to this fundamental transformation of the lives and livelihoods at the bottom of the pyramid. And Bank of Brother wants to play a small part in this transformation. At BOB, we have always considered financial inclusion as a viable business proposition. And our market share in PMJDY accounts, being two times our market share in India, is testimony to the success that is possible in this and also the enormous potential that still remains untapped. With better understanding of women's saving behavior, which this report enables us to do, and designing new Jandhan Plus product, I am sure it will prove to be a better business proposition for the bank. And also, uh, we would want to therefore support and also make a success the initiative of Women's World Banking in UP, where again, a large project is being today unfolded to make this Jantan account plus a big success. So my best wishes again to Jantan account uh, holders and also to Women's World Banking, which is part of a very broad-based transformational program. Bank of Brothers is proud to be part of it, and we hope that will be a great success. I wish all of you a safe and healthy time ahead. Thank you very much, Jen. Thank you, Mr. Chada, for your remarks. Your partnership is priceless, priceless to us at Women's World Banking. Now to unveil the report's key findings and takeaways, Women's World Banking Director of Advisory Services in India, Pallavi Tiwari Mathak. Hello everyone, and thank you, Ariane. Thank you, Mr. Amitabh Khan and Mr. Sanjeev Chatta for your steadfast commitment to the cause of financial inclusion. For Jandan customers and recognizing the importance of women Jandan customers within this. Today, I'll be sharing with all of you Women's World Banking's industry report, The Power of Jandhan, 
making finance work for women in India. The report is the result of Women's World Banking's research and work in the field with women and women Jandhan customers across the past few years, along with our financial service partners. Our key assertion in the report is that financial service partners can provide and build financial empowerment to over 40 crore or 400 million low income lives in India. Like both Mr. Kant and Mr. Chadda have explained, the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana has been pivotal in making basic banking facilities available to over 42 crore or 420 million Indians to date since its launch. For the global audience on this call, Government of India's Jandhan scheme was launched in 2014. Under this, a basic no frills account was made available to customers with minimal KYC. This along with Aadhaar unique identification number and the increasing mobile penetration became the cornerstone for financially including millions of Indians, especially the un and underserved. As a result, women with access to financial services grew significantly from 26% to 77% in 2017. And today, these women make up 55% of Jandhan accounts. These women accounts today form a valuable customer segment for banks. We believe there is significant opportunity to accelerate government and the banking sector's efforts by designing solutions that help women deepen their engagement with the Jandhan account. Our research shows us that women are active and committed savers. Our, a survey with Jandhan customers showed that 70% of Jandhan women save. However, women use multiple ways of saving and only 29% of them actually use their own Jandhan accounts for their savings. This is because women face multiple barriers to banking. First, they do not perceive banks as a place to save as it is less familiar. They don't consider banks as a place to save small amounts. They don't consider saving with banks to be convenient and are not always aware of their local business correspondent. And finally, they use other means of savings out of hand. However, women are committed savers and they are loyal customers as they have fewer banking relationships. They typically display favorable credit repayment behavior. They are an attractive segment to cross sell other financial products and they are advocates for formal savings amongst family and community. As a result, women customers are a valuable segment for banks. Our estimates in fact show us that women Jandhan customers in general are more profitable than men Jandhan customers to the bank. When both men and women are engaged to save, a woman's lifetime revenue is at least 12% higher than her male counterpart. Engaging women in savings also has a significant impact at the macro level. This is because when women increase um, their own savings, it increases their agency and control over household income. This positively impacts her family. As when women are the main decision makers, households spend more on healthcare, education, and nutrition. And their regular small savings form an important financial security for families in crisis, as we've recently seen. This has positive ripple effects on the community and can reduce poverty and income inequalities in economy. To tap into this opportunity, we worked with Bank of Baroda to design a solution that would increase the savings engagement of women Jandhan customers. We designed Jandhan Plus as a solution to welcome, motivate, and reward her for saving at the bank. It includes three elements. The first leg seeks to make saving with the bank relatable and rewardable for her. The second leg is a solution to reach and welcome women to save at the bank. And finally, the third leg, seeks to drive customer engagement through the business correspondent channel. Let me talk a little bit more about our learnings from the field. First, the promise of small savings bundled with overdrafts is relevant and rewarding. Jandhan Plus is a small savings scheme that asks women to save 500 rupees every month for four months. It motivates them to sustain the savings with the promise of the linked PMJDY overdraft and other behavioral nudges. The PMJDY overdraft, which is seamlessly linked with the Jandhan account, works as a great motivator for customers to engage and save with the bank. 
second if made aware women janthan customers are willing to save with the bank communication that is relatable and welcomes women customers to start saving is key in addition making this available at bank touch points via the business correspondence branches and by using alternative channels like calling and sms helps increase reach and awareness in fact um, of janthan customers after being aware of the small saving scheme 50% were willing to save with the bank third relationship oriented business correspondence can unlock value from women janthan customers the business correspondence channel is a preferred channel for women customers and is the key to deepening women's engagement with the bank correspondents today however operate as human atms and need to graduate to being bank relationship managers they can and should be upskilled incentivized supported to operate as fully functioning branches empowered to make decisions to actively manage their customer bases grow them and in doing so create opportunity for themselves so how do we do this first providing incentives that motivate correspondents to focus and grow their business beyond demand based cash and cash out second helping correspondents become discoverable in their community and reach out to more customers third providing correspondents information and tools to help them cross sell nudge and better serve customers simple things like a pop up that reminds agents to cross sell products to a specific customer can go a long way and finally helping correspondents develop skills through training and sustaining these skills through mentoring and supervision in the field we also noticed that women correspondents make better relationship managers our research showed that only 10% of business correspondents displayed successful relationship skills however women agents though they are form less than 10% of the network are likely to outperform their male counterparts by 50% if provided impetus as a result women agents are three times more valuable than male agents for the bank we believe there can be big gains if banks succeed in engaging women customers on savings the janthan plus opportunity helps banks go beyond using janthan for direct benefit transfers and transactions it helps banks to nudge each customer to save securely unlock insurance and overdraft and thereby build resilience for the entire family janthan plus can enable 100 million low income women to initiate a habit of small savings and thereby make them atmanirbhar or self reliant through this banks can unlock for these customers rupees 250 billion in savings balances while dispersing rupees 100 billion in overdraft loans and insuring 80 million households through schemes like the pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana and the pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana through these 100 million women customers banks can indirectly reach and impact the lives of 400 million low income people in their households in summary jan dhan plus has the transformative potential to be the next big step in india's financial inclusion journey and therefore I'd like to summarize with four action points for financial service providers and policy makers. Lever one: Create relevant and simplified products for women. Offer Janthan Plus as a solution to mobilize savings. Auto sanction the PMJDY OD in savings engaged accounts. Use customer savings history as a reputational collateral and automate this process. Automating decisioning for low ticket loans reduces the overall burden on the system. and enhances the customer's experience develop more use cases for savings for example launch a upi receive only handle which can enable women to receive payments directly in their janthan accounts lever 2 promote awareness and nudge customers to save using communication hooks specially designed for her focus on small amounts make her feel welcome invite her to the correspondent point use tools like tracking cards sms or alerts to, which act as nudges to trigger behavior change explore low cost mediums to reach women and build awareness for example ivr based calling or community camps specially focused on small savings lever 3 strengthen the business correspondent network to make them relationship managers banks should segment their business correspondence basis performance and needs to manage the channel better 
This will help them identify potential business correspondents that can be groomed to become relationship managers. We recommend investing in helping agents build relationship skills by training, mentoring, and rewarding, rewarding them and providing tools that increase reach and ability to cross-sell. And finally, explore creating a cadre of women agents and provide them the initial support and additional mentoring. And finally, lever four, track sex disaggregated data and monitor the portfolio. Robust, actionable sex disaggregated data deepens our understanding of this market opportunity and can be used by banks, policymakers, and regulators to design actionable steps. This can include monthly sex disaggregated data on bank portfolio metrics, which help us understand savings balances, product penetration, and usage, or transaction behavior, which helps us understand the channel they use and how they use these products. Understanding the differences in women's customer behavior will help financial institutions and policymakers succeed in their efforts to advance financial inclusion. We hope that our report would inspire you to take action in your spheres of influence and make finance work for Jandhan women in India. More details are available in our report, so please use the link placed in the chat box to download and read the report. And now, I would like to introduce to you my colleague, Mr. Sriram Jagannathan. He heads Women's World Banking's India office. Sriram, after a successful career of 21 years in Citibank, four years in Airtel Money, and three years in Amazon Financial Services, moved into the not-for-profit sector in 2018 to head Women's World Banking's India practice. I would like to welcome Sriram and Mr. Sanjeev Chadda back again to take questions from the live audience. Thank you, thank you, Pallavi. Uh, uh, this is Ajit Agarwal from Women's World Banking team. And I can see a lot of questions from the audience. Uh, 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 let me, I'm choosing one. Uh, so this is for Mr. Chadda, uh, uh, a question from the audience is, what are your plans with respect to Jandhan Plus work uh, that the bank has pioneered? So I think uh, in many ways, uh, the fundamental uh, work that was required in terms of account acquisition that has been done. Now the question is, how can we leverage this investment, both to the benefit of the customers whom we have acquired and also for the benefit of the bank? And this is where I think the project uh, that Women's World Banking has undertaken uh, to understand uh, our account holders, to understand uh, what are their propensities, and how can we engage more deeply with them? I think that's something which is very important. All organizations uh, invest a lot in terms of customer acquisition. Uh, for us, that difficult part has been done. Now the question is, can we keep the engagement on uh, for over a long period of time to make sure that A, uh, we can uh, tap the potential that has been created and B, also keep on fine tuning our product range to make sure that it is relevant to the changing need of our customers. So that's, I think, number one. Number two, of course, is that uh, given propensity, how can uh, your customers access you? Uh, here, I think, as we heard, uh, while women say uh, they do not see bank branches as a normal avenue to channelize savings, and that is where the business correspondence become very important. Important in terms of last mile connectivity, and also important in terms of making sure that it's a scalable model and also cost effective. So for us, uh, scaling up this model, uh, making it proportionate to our share in terms of Jandhan account, and also uh, making sure that as, uh, as, as uh, Pallavi was discussing, that we engage with our business correspondents, we make sure that they can graduate from being VCs to relationship managers. All these things I think are very important building blocks uh, to tapping fully the potential that has been created. Excellent, Mr. Chadda. Thank you so much uh, for, for your response. Uh, uh, now, going back to uh, the second question, now I would like to direct this question to Sriram. It says, RBI has just released a financial inclusion index. Based on your background in financial inclusion, you know, what is your reaction to this? Sriram? Hello, am I back? Yes, Shiram, we can hear you. Sorry, I, I, I had a little drop in between. 
I am repeating the question, uh, Shiram. Uh, so Thank the you. question from the audience is: RBI has just released a financial inclusion index. Based on your background in financial inclusion, you know what is your reaction to this? Thank you so much. We very much welcome the creation of this financial inclusion index, which I think really underscores uh, the importance that both the government and RBI are placing on financial inclusion. I think it's excellent that it's uh, not only looking at uh, ease of access, but also on usage and especially on quality. Uh, so we're very happy to note that the, there is an improvement in the index, you know, from 43.4 to 53.9, especially in a COVID affected period, which I think is a 24% improvement is, is quite credible. Uh, so we look forward to the details of this index calculation being shared in the public domain so that we can study the issues and the opportunities and also use it to tailor interventions in a more effective manner. It will be particularly helpful to look at the index for women's financial inclusion. So if we, if we could do that, then this improvement would not only be equitable, but also it will go a long way towards, you know, our designing services that will help both women and the households they come from. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shiram. Uh, uh, really comprehensive be covered. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, coming back to the third question, this is again directed towards Mr. Chadda. Uh, 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 sir, uh, you know, what according to you, is the biggest untapped opportunity with women Jandhan customers in India? I think uh, the report pretty much uh, identifies the uh, untapped opportunity. It is that uh, there is a, such a large body of customers who have a propensity to save, and yet those savings are not being channelized through banking channels. That is the biggest opportunity. And it is also an opportunity which then you might say uh, sets off a virtuous cycle. Uh, once uh, women uh, customers start using bank accounts uh, to, for their own savings, uh, as we discussed, there's an opportunity uh, to give them overdrafts. Uh, there's an opportunity to uh, also uh, cross-selling other financial products which are already available to us. Uh, micro insurance, accident insurance, life insurance, uh, so there's a, there's a vast uh, opportunity which is there, but all this is predicated upon our ability to engage with customers and engage with them at, on terms uh, which with they are familiar with, which with, with which they are which is convenient to them, and in a manner where they can access banking services much more conveniently as compared to accessing them through traditional bank branches. Super, thank you, uh, Mr. Chadda. Uh, thank you so much for, for your response. Uh, dear Shiram, if I have to put this question uh, to you, what, what would be your uh, uh, response to that? So I very much agree with Mr. Chadda. I think the report captures a lot of these insights. I mean, most importantly, there is a clear opportunity to design products you know, uh, uh, that can engage women, you know, uh, regular savings, an automated overdraft pro uh, product, you know, developing a receive-only handle for UPI that makes it easy for women to receive money into their accounts without you know, learning any complicated process of using an app or things like that. So there are several opportunities to design relevant products. Second, I think uh, the, the awareness, communication, and engagement, you know, which lets women know that they're welcome to use these accounts uh, to, use, to, to, to do small savings and thus deepen the relationship. And uh, knowing how to reach the banking correspondent channel and engage with them, I think would be very uh, wonderful. And, uh, uh, and of course, having our uh, uh, banking correspondents who are so important, uh, you know, as a representative of the bank, you know, to, uh, to turn into relationship managers, really, and especially if they can be gender sensitized, if we can have more women business correspondents, I think it can have a great impact. And the last, I think, uh, you know, like uh, the opportunity with the RBI's new financial inclusion index, you know, the, looking at gender disaggregated data, sex disaggregated data, you know, to, to be able to identify specific actions that can be taken. There is a lot of opportunity if just this, that data becomes, you know, uh, uh, visible uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, to product teams, this uh, sales channels, things like that. Um, and I would say from a regulatory and policy maker perspective, there is the opportunity to therefore encourage a culture of looking at, uh, you know, sex disaggregated data uh, and to look at the indices in a, in a specific manner, uh, uh, you know, with the gender component. And most importantly, given that all the public sector banks and the government together have created this wonderful opportunity with the Jandan infrastructure, you know, any uh, uh, joint effort, you know, to promote uh, awareness of small savings, you know, like the mutual fund Sahiha campaign, if, uh, you know, there was a broader way to engage 
you know, the country into a smaller savings uh, program, it would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Shiram. Uh, uh, we can just take one more question here uh, as we are running a little bit out of time. So I will direct this question to Pallavi. Uh, Pallavi, uh, the question is, in the era of fintech, what specific aspects of Jandhan needs to be digitized? Right. Thank you for that, Ajay. Um, in fact, our report also um, has certain suggestions on how banks can use technology in a more effective manner for Jandhan accounts. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. I think Shriram also touched upon some of them. Um, uh, one is, you know, we can use technology to reach out to women in a cost-effective manner. For example, using SMS or backend alerts from the banking system, or even uh, voice IVR facilities to reach out to customers, nudge them to save. So that's one example. Another example is that we can use technology as the BC point um, to make the BC more relationship oriented, um, give him a complete profile of the customer so that he can cross sell them various products. A third example in the report that we referred to was of course the sanctioning, auto sanctioning of overdrafts and uh, um, getting the UPI receive only handle as a very uh, uh, a simple technology that can enable women to receive money in their accounts. So those are four examples for you. Thank you. Thank you, Pallavi. Uh, there are a lot many questions uh, here and very, very interesting questions. Uh, uh, I, I mean, we will definitely share our, uh, the responses to the outstanding questions uh, over email. We have, uh, have your email IDs. Uh, so thank you. Over to uh, Pallavi. Uh, Right, um, and uh, thank you so much, Ajit. And you know, I'm now going to actually be handing over to Shriram for his closing remarks. Shriram, you're on mute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Kant, Mr. Chadda, Pallavi, and Harsha for your really wonderful perspectives and for our engaged audience offering very relevant questions. I saw a lot of them, it's uh, really fantastic, thank you. To recap the main points from today's event, I, I think it's worthy to note that there are more Jandan women holders in India than there are women in any other country in the world except China. It's an extraordinary fact. So India has the opportunity to drive the world's largest women's empowerment program simply by focusing on this fantastic Jandan infrastructure, which has been built by the government and the banks. There are four pillars to do this, uh, as captured in the report, you know, based on the joint work done with, uh, you know, Bank of Baroda and several financial institutions. One is creating relevant and simplified products for women, like the Jandan Plus, uh, you know, product that was shared. Second, to promote the awareness and to nudge customers into this small regular savings, making women feel welcome to do that in their Jandan accounts. Third, to strengthen the business correspondent network to make them relationship managers. 90% of them are men today, while the customers that they serve are 55% women. So gender sensitization and training to help them to turn into relationship managers so that women uh, and adding more women agents. And the last is uh, looking to track uh, sex disaggregated data and to use it actively in deepening the engagement. I'd like to really sincerely thank Mr. P.S. Jaikumar, the former MD of Bank of Baroda for beginning this project and Mr. Chadda for his continued support and guidance on enhancing its scope and impact. Thank you, Executive Director Mr. Kichi and former CGM Mr. B.R. Patel for your continued support and direction across all the stages of our project. My appreciation also goes to Mr. Murli Krishna, former General Manager of the Financial Inclusion Department and Ms. Archana, the present GAM as also the brilliant team of Nalin, Suresh, Satish, uh, Sumit, and sent the several people in the Central FI team. We really truly appreciate the energy and the engagement of the very dynamic Bank of Baroda Financial Inclusion Department. So I'd really like to also express my thanks to the Indian government, you know, for creating this brilliant Jandan infrastructure, which has penetrated so deeply into all segments of our population. This has made it possible for us to seek to engage low income customers, particularly women, you know, with the formal financial institutions. Uh, uh, we thank you, uh, Ms. Nirmala Sita Raman, our Lady Finance Minister, because of whom the government targeted women customers to transfer benefits to households during the challenging period of COVID. This ended up 
elevating the importance of women's ownership of these bank accounts and the use of jandan accounts within their families and it has led to a surge in women's accounts in the country which is seen by more all the banks i'm also very thankful for the talented staff at women's world banking who seek to use their professional skills by working with forward looking partners like bank of baroda to engage low income customers particularly women i'm very grateful to our donors visa foundation michael and suzel dell foundation and walmart foundation whose steady support conviction and encouragement has allowed us to pursue this program and to seek this impact we really look forward to inviting all of you again in the future to share further progress in this journey lastly i am very thankful to each and every one of you who have attended today and we shared the learnings with us on the work that we've done so far we look forward to the opportunity of future collaboration with uh, you know with with you do reach out to us as also help us to share these learnings for broader gains by others thank you so much for joining today and with this we close have a wonderful day